I'll just start by asking, this movie, did you ever think that this movie was ever going to see the light of day? Because it did have a bit of a, it was a bit of a hold up, wasn't there? Yeah, it well, was to do with studio realignment. We yeah. made it, we made the film for Miramax uh, and Miramax is owned by Disney. Disney had a change of management right after we delivered the film. And the first thing they did was close down the Miramax studios. Very sad event. And put a little bit discombobulating for us because we ha- were not released at that point. And initially, Disney were going to release the film themselves. But since they were also setting about reconsolidating their brand as a sort of family, uh, home of family entertainment, this is not exactly a family movie, although actually I would dispute that, but it's not what you think of as a family movie. And, um, and they sold the Miramax label and sold our film along with it um, in, towards the end of last year when we thought we'd been going out at, in the end of 2010. But to our great relief, uh, Universal snapped the film up very quickly and and but wanted to wait until the fall to release it so yes it's had an odd journey into the light but you know it happens and sometimes when that happens it happens you know for a good reason or at least there's a good outcome people uh, audiences probably know you best from as the director of you know Shakespeare in Love and Mrs mm-hmm. Brown and Catherine Corelli and mm-hmm. it seems like quite an unlikely um avenue for you I suppose this why'd you get that thriller. guy to do it <laughs> but I mean did you see it as a challenge or did, what, I, what I did I mean I, it's not the first time I directed a thriller as a matter of mm-hmm. fact the film I made before Mrs Brown was a thriller um which I was subsequently offered as a remake <laughs> of my own film uh, after after Shakespeare in Love in Hollywood but that's by the by. I, I mean, I, I've worked in this genre before, just not in films. Um, and I don't necessarily think in genre terms, although I can't imagine a director who would not want to work in the thriller form because it's the most purely cinematic form and it's one that really exercises your skills and, uh, you know, it's pretty exacting in terms of storytelling. So, uh, yeah, I was very happy to have a chance to do it, but really because it was a a thriller that's also a complex uh, emotional and psychological and moral drama at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it's a remake of an Israeli film. I'm mm-hmm. just wondering, I mean, what's your opinion on, re- on you know, American or Hollywood remakes of... of I, I, I totally music? understand the impulse, to be honest with you. I mean, I, uh, in this particular case, it had to do with the fact that the original film was made in Hebrew and therefore didn't, uh, you know ever have a wider audience uh, because of that and and clearly it, the the subject matter is so challenging and interesting that it deserved to but the the instinct to reassess and reinterpret is completely natural to me because I come from a theatrical background uh, and um, and I think we are constantly doing that as a culture we re-examine things we uh, um, well we just reinterpret them and look at them freshly And that's a particular kind of experience for an audience. I think there's a lot of, you know, there's there's a sort of orthodoxy that says why, you know, uh, leave something alone, let it be. But we don't, we never do that in the theatre. I mean, it's it's certainly true that no theatrical experience is ever memorialised in the way that a film is. But I I guess I understand it completely. Were you at all uh, reluctant or hesitant about wading into the kind of contentious uh, area of Israeli history, even though this is fiction? But I mean, you're, you are yeah, kind of getting into it. Yeah, a... you approach it with proper responsibility, not just to do with Israeli history, but obviously to do with the events that lie behind the foundation of that uh, state, which is the Holocaust and and moral culpability and so on and so forth. I mean, that is the subject matter of the film and the need for heroes and... Uh, how history is transmitted. It's got a lot of these ideas uh, um, woven through it. And you certainly don't, particularly if you're making a thriller, which is a genre associated with, uh, you know, where the brain is often left at the door. Um, It's a particular responsibility because I had no interest in making a film that simply took that situation and the emotional charge of that situation and hijacked it uh, for exploitive uh, purposes. Um, and so we were very aware of that when we were writing it and and working on it. And I would hope it doesn't do that. Yeah, I mean, as a fail safe, just get Helen Mirren to kick ass on screen. As well. <laughs> Can't go wrong, can you? <laughs> no, no. That's great, John. Thanks, Good. Mel. You're welcome.